The challenge is in the form of a lawsuit filed today by attorney David Crump in District Clerk Bill Shaw's office. The suit is on behalf of an Irving group called the Irving Forum, and it charges that the legislature, the Dallas County Commissioners, and the Irving City Council all acted unconstitutionally in allowing drinks to be sold in Texas Stadium. And Irving Forum Vice President James Scoggins stressed that the group in filing the suit isn't out to get anybody. He explained the purpose of the suit for me in an interview. This was the scene that Monday night in October when prisoners on the 11th and 12th floor of the Dallas County Jail went wild. They destroyed everything from commodes to trash cans and fashioned weapons for almost anything they could lay their hands on. Bedding was burned and thrown out windows, glass broken. There was even more damage as firemen turned water hose rioting prisoners to try to restore order. The result, of course, was ankle deep puddles in the halls. Sheriff Jones' men restored order in a relatively short period of time. But the damage, over $19 worth, had already been done. A conversation with County Auditor George Smith reveals that the greatest portion of the cost was to replace the bedding, which came out at nearly $10,000 by itself. Prisoners' clothing, $432.
Replacing torn up garbage cans, $408. Paint, electrical, plumbing supplies to put things back in shape and the county man hours to fix them. Not even included in that $19,000 figure is an additional $13,500 spent on new riot gear for the sheriff's department. I talked with Dallas County Sheriff Clarence Jones about his thoughts on the matter. Well, I think, first of all, that uh, where, where there were inequities that did exist, uh, we had to get those straightened out. And I think one of the primary causes for a situation like this has been within the, uh, I think, the area of jail rules. Uh, those are in the process. Many of them have been rewritten. Some are uh, still in the process of being altered somewhat so that everyone clearly understands exactly where they stand. And I think this is true not only with, uh, with the inmates, but with the jailer also. The Dallas County Jail has still got problems and overcrowding. The current population is somewhere near 1,600. The jail designed to hold 1,222 prisoners. This is one of the things that'll have to be ironed out before we can guarantee, or at least come closer to guaranteeing, that we won't have any more trouble like we did on October 4th. This is Malcolm Landis of the Dallas County Jail for Channel 8 News on the Move. Uh, well, we'll have to use quite a few change-ups, I think, and we'll you know, have to really be on our toes because he's one of the best passes you'll ever see in football. And anytime you got a person like Joe Namie, you can't afford to make any type of mistakes, and we've got to play real heads of football. How could you compare Namath to other leading uh, passers in the NFL that you have faced this year? Well, he's got about the quickest release I've ever seen and since I've been in football, and that's uh, what makes it real tough on the defensive back. I mean, you can't be out of a step with the uh, receiver or else the ball is there before you can ever regain the step. Yes, Johnny Jurgensen did not look particularly sharp when he returned to action against the Cowboys, and yet Namath seemed fairly sharp against the 49ers. Does that make Namath then a better quarterback than uh, Jurgensen? Well, both of them. I admire both of them. I wouldn't you know, want to compare a pick to one that I think is the best quarterback. I thought, think Simon Jurgensen is a great quarterback, and I think Joe Namath is a great quarterback, and I'm just happy to be against, to get the chance to play against both of them. Gabriel completed a number of passes, yet uh, you gentlemen term made the turnovers and uh, carried the game against the Rams. Uh, what, will Namath complete as many passes against you this Saturday? Well, I hope not. You know, you're, you're out there to shut our quarterbacks out. And you, but, you know, with a guy like Namath, you don't expect to uh, shut him out completely because it's, uh, he's a real pro, and you, I don't think he can be done against any quarterback who can really throw the football as well as he does. But all we th trying to think we're trying to do is create the turnovers and try to nullify what he do best. Well, I think it means, it means a lot. You know, he's, for the past five, four years he's been a real leader of that team, a spiritual leader. And uh, I think, you know, defensively, when a defense knows they have a man who can put points on the board, they're going to play inspired football. And offensively, they're going to be, you know, playing to protect him. And, uh, you know, the receivers are going to be aware that he can get the ball if they make the right cuts. And, you know, it's going to make a lot of difference. Uh, it's going to be a tough game, I think. Would you, as uh, Mel expressed in print the other day, prefer to play the Jets with Namath coming into the final three games of the season? Yeah, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, theoretically we're going into this game and, and the next two games thinking that we're going to be the champions. And, uh, you know, when you're thinking that way, it doesn't matter who you play, uh, you know, whether it's the best team or the worst team, uh, whether it's the best quarterback or the worst quarterback. And, you know, we're going against one of the best in name it. We've got a very good basis of what we're uh, coming to them with. Uh, and this isn't anything I dreamed up in the last few days. I've been talking to them about uh, over the uh, uh, the last five years on this music uh, music hall renovation, on the uh, uh, taking of the arts and centering them in the Fair Park area when uh, this isn't the, the place for them. And uh, uh, I think we can reach a, an agreement on it too, because all I'm asking, as I say, is to... Uh, bring it back in front of the public. What's wrong with that? Well, our conference is designed primarily and almost entirely to bring in together uh, all of the SAC directors of operations from our bomber wings, our reconnaissance wings, our missile wings, and to discuss 
really ways and means by which we can do the job that we're faced to uh, in a better manner. Probably the key motivating factor behind our confidence is the fact that we are being asked constantly, and rightfully so, to do more with less. And really the theme of our confidence is how we can better manage the resources which the uh, country has given to us to, uh, to our mission with. I, uh, I would say that um, I had a, a good uh, season. Uh, I hadn't caught as many as passes as I would like, but uh, you know, we have uh, been shelling our quarterback uh, quite a bit this year, and uh, we've been going with this quarterback and that quarterback, and as a receiver, you just can't uh, gel as a, as a receiver and a quarterback together. But uh, as of today, you know, I, uh, I feel real good, and I hadn't been healthy most of the season. Uh, thank God I am now, and I feel real good, and uh, of course my performance uh, overall during the year, I'm not satisfied, only because I haven't caught uh, as many passes as I would want to. Uh, they double and triple team you all the time, though, don't they? Oh, definitely. I thought maybe it would have been a change since uh, we got all worked through the trade, but uh, it seems as though that uh, I've been getting more. What about the Jet defense? What will they throw up against you this Saturday? I think the entire club is a, a unit now with uh, Joe uh, Namath back and the unity that they have because of uh, Namath back, and I think he gave them a lift what they needed. They know that they are out of it, but uh, they feel that with uh, being pros and uh, their attitude and their pride, I think they're going to come out and give us a real tough uh, fight uh, Saturday. We're trying to uh, uh, get an academic question, answer to an academic inquiry. <clears throat> we would hope that uh, uh, the eventual outcome would be to reestablish once and for all, again, as it's been done in the past, uh, uh, the right of self-determination by the people. It's one of those rights which have eroded over the years, as we both know, slowly and surely. But uh, of consequence this time, I think it's important enough for us to take a stand and ask for a determination in this matter. Well, now, you say that you don't care whether it's wet or dry. You're trying to determine the legal question. Does that mean that you will not ask for an injunction for, the, the, for them to stop the sale of alcohol? Yes, that's correct. They're operating under proper zoning and uh, proper application. They've gone through the, the logical and reasonable steps to get their zoning. And to ask for an injunction would be a somewhat uh, expression of intent to do harm to them, to them. And it's not our intent to do harm to anybody, to their business or to any individual concerned in this one. The city of Irving is dry. Irving Forum Vice President Jim Scoggins says there hasn't been a local option election held here for about 10 years. Nevertheless, on the edge of this dry area, box holders in Texas Stadium are sitting there on football weekends drinking. Scoggins says there is a possibility of an appeal if the court rules that everything is legal in Texas Stadium. But he says whether or not there will be an appeal depends on exactly how that ruling is made. Meantime, the people who are drinking in their boxes at Texas Stadium apparently will continue to do so. Bill Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move in Irving. The ceremonies got underway shortly after 10 o'clock this morning with the official procession of faculty members across the campus to the main auditorium. Included in the procession were Governor Preston Smith, Lieutenant Governor Ben Barnes, and of course, NTSU's new president. Inside the hall, after remarks by several university officials, Board Chairman A.M. Willis of Longview presented Jitter Nolan with the symbol of the office of the presidency. I present you this medallion as a symbol of your authority and the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of your office, I congratulate you, sir, and wish you well.
Later at a noon luncheon, attended by 750 friends of the university, Nolan made his official inaugural address. In it, he spoke of NTSU as the University of the North Texas region. He pointed to its growth, its expansion, its problems, and its future. He concluded by saying that North Texas has more potential than any university in the state. Here at North Texas State University, we still yearn for improvement, securing the knowledge that the present gathered capability, the components of which are represented here today, compels us to dare to reach for the highest and the best that is within us. I have stressed a recurring theme since arriving here. Our regents and administrative team have shared this from the start. No man is an island, each a part of the main. John Dunn probably did not know the word interdependence, but that is the name of the game. With your help and God's help, we shall keep on striving and reaching and becoming and the days ahead shall be brighter and brighter. The ceremonies are over, the plaudits concluded, the festivities finished. Jitter Nolan is back at his desk, no longer acting president of North Texas University, now officially charged with the responsibility of being head man, officially charged as the man who must make the decisions to run this university right. It all became official today. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move, North Texas State University, Denton. The 400 delegates to the National Mental Health Association Convention in Dallas are faced with big problems. The main problem is the poor and how to get mental health help to them. The association has determined that the disadvantaged or impoverished of the United States are faced with the greatest and biggest mental health problems and have the least aid in recognizing and curing these mental health deficiencies. The National Association for National Mental Health is urging the President's support for the Child Development Act, which is part of the Senate Bill S-2007. The bill proposes a federal community plan to raise mentally ill children. It would be 80% federally funded. A lot of people fear this bill because the first response might be, does this mean the government can raise the nation's mentally ill children better than the parents? I asked the Mental Health Association President-elect, Irving Chase, what his answer to this kind of charge might be. The fact of the question, the fact of the matter is that in the case of seriously uh, uh, ill children, emotionally ill children, the pattern in our country for the most part is that the parents reject them and they are become charges on society and are handled in institutional settings for the most part. The purpose is to provide a daycare uh, setting in which the child can, and it's voluntary, there's no, there's no, uh, there's not going to be any policeman who's going to come and require a child to go to these but to provide a setting where the child, the parent, may voluntarily take his child daily uh, for uh, these kinds of care. In further action today, delegates to the convention struck two major blows at national programs which directly affect the mentally ill. One of these programs is drugs. They say the drug centers in the United States and the programs are totally ineffective. Another problem facing these is the national health insurance programs. They say the insurance plans do not cover the mentally ill, not adequately enough. Between now and Friday when the convention dismisses, there must be an answer to these problems. It's up to the delegates to find one. This is Donna Witkowski for Channel 8 News on the Move. Coach, what will Namath's presence mean to the Cowboys this Saturday? Well, I'm sure that Namath's presence will mean a lot more to the Jets, you know, uh, than the Cowboys. Uh, I think it will make a, a much more competent team, really, uh, than uh, would have happened before. I think when Namath works, uh, he's an excellent quarterback, and everybody knows it, so he's going to give everybody confidence, which will make our job much tougher. What about uh, Roger Staubach, Coach? Is he all right? Roger's okay. Roger's just throwing uh, early this week, and he uh, still has a sore neck, but that's a lot of people are sore right now, and he and he's working good, and I think he'll be 100% by Saturday. Do you think the presence of Joe Namath has more to do with the Cowboys' early sellout than their position in the season? Oh, I think so. I think that personalities like uh, Joe Namath uh, tends to attract people, and that's what the pro game is all about, uh, and uh, this is good. And uh, I would say that this was the main reason for it, for the sellout. What is Walt Garrison's uh, physical condition at this moment? 
Well, actually, Walt has had a charry horse now for several weeks, and he's been playing with it. He's uh, had a little calcium buildup in that muscle, and uh, so we're resting him to see whether or not it will go away. So I would say that he's questionable for a performance Saturday, although knowing him, I think he could be ready. Coach, since you're out of moves, how would you get Jethro Pugh back on the active roster? Well, actually, there's two ways you can do it. One is if you get an injury that's bad enough where you can put a, a player on a reserve for the year. In other words, he, if he couldn't play anymore, this is one way to do it. Uh, the other way is that you must waive a player uh, off of your team and put him through waivers, which opens a spot on your uh, team. It's a cold, rainy night in Sherman, Texas today. It's always like this, the local people tell me, on the night of the big Christmas parade. This parade is a very big deal in this North Texas community. Some nine bands were scheduled to march in the Christmas parade, but all but two thinked out. One of them was the Sherman High School Band, and the other was the Asher B. Duran Memorial Big Drum and Amos Marching Corps from Fink, Texas. The Sherman Band and the Allen High School Band, which also managed to brave the cold, were your typically noisy, traditionally uniformed marching band. Good, but predictable. However, the Fink entry consisted of some dozen or so slightly underaged, goodwill industry clothed, a bit out of step youngsters with a cause. Why didn't they play their instruments? Because this was a band devoted to reducing noise pollution, except for that drummer. Some of them couldn't even play the horns they were carrying. Asher B. Duran, by the way, was an anti-letter advocate of the last century. We talked with the mayor of Fink and asked if this was a typical civic activity of the community. No, they sure don't. This is our first time. How come you got into this one? Well, I sponsored this group of kids here from Sherman. Tell me about Fink. What is the population today? Nine. Have you lived in Fink long? Yes, I sure have. I, in fact, I was born there. Tell me about it. Well, it's just one store. Just think. Y'all have become pretty internationally famous, haven't you? Yes, we sure have. How's that come about? Well, just, I guess, being finky. Well, we feel that this could be a good one, Jay. We, we think that uh, with the returning lettermen we have, all of them are, are we think, are good basketball players, and uh, we're looking to a good season this year. Do you think it's still going to be a rebuilding job, or do you have any conference championships in sight? Well, uh, of course, when you always start a season, you always have the, the goals of a championship, and, of course, this is what we'll be shooting for. We feel that this year, if some of the newcomers do develop, uh, we have a chance. We have a very good chance of winning the Southland Conference championship. The Southland Conference has just been strengthened with the addition of Louisiana Tech and Southwestern Louisiana. How are they going to affect the standings this year? 
they'll affect them quite a lot. Now, they will be playing a most unusual uh, schedule. Uh, they do not play all of us, but they will be competing for the conference championship. Some of the citizens in the area think that we need uh, additional protection and an additional patrolmen we feel like will alleviate some of their fears. What is the next step for the city council? Where would you go from here? We take back to the city council our what we, information we receive from the sheriff and uh, discuss with them our portion of it, which would be the dispatch service. Well, I would say this, you know, I think those labels have less and less meaning as time goes on. And I would uh, stand and will stand on the proposition that I'm a Democrat, as Mr. Rayburn used to say, without prefix, without suffix. I think you have to talk about issues in terms of the specifics of the issues. If you're saying uh, uh, by conservative, you mean are you for uh, effective law enforcement, then I'd be a conservative. Uh, if by liberal you mean you're for uh, first-class schools or you're for doing more about pollution, uh, then I'd be a liberal. And so it seems to me the only way you can really sum it up and the way I sum it up is that I'm a Democrat and I run as a Democrat and I seek support as a Democrat to serve as a Democrat in a Democratic Senate, uh, but in the independent tradition of Texas. as compared to the assessment of personal property or as compared to the assessment of real estate. Real estate can easily be located and assessed at least on a fairly equitable basis, while personal property is most difficult to locate and uh, even more difficult to, to value. And without standards and formulas and uh, 
methods for assessing personal property, why it's not possible to achieve equalization with the assessment of real estate. So this equalization is going to be one of the things that this committee aims toward, isn't it? That is correct. Now how would you recommend that they go about this? By a complete revision of the antiquated state tax laws. What will that require? It will require uh, passage by the legislature, a revision of the, of the present statute, and some constitutional amendments to revise the Constitution. Well, that's a considerable revision of the law. What do you think the chances are of that coming to pass? It's a very difficult job. It's been tried several times before, but failed. But hopefully this, this committee will be successful. Dallas County Community Action has been ordered by the Office of Economic Opportunity to comply with federal regulations regarding employed conflicts of interest. They must comply by today or face a loss of federal funding. The order specifically states, no person shall hold a job while he or a member of his immediate family serves on a board or committee of a grantee or delegated agency if that board or committee has authority to order personnel action affecting his job. One person taking exception to this ruling is Stanley Gaines, chairman of the TACC, who has filed an appeal with OEO. Now, we do not see where there is any conflict of interest between a person belonging to a neighborhood organization which does not determine whether he can, can be hired or fired and his holding a job. I understand that some 30 members of uh, the Warren Poverty Organization will be affected by the new ruling, and uh, one lady, Mrs. Aline Hardy, is already on suspicion, or on suspension, rather, as a result of this ruling. Well, that would, would really, if the rule were applied, in, if, if it were correct for the rule to be applied the way that, uh, that a lot of, lot of people are being led to believe it should be applied, there'd be more than 30 people involved, because you have a whole bunch of DCA employees who belong to neighborhood organizations. However, DCA has imp up, imp applied this ruling only to people who work in the community house component. The end of the working day today is supposedly the deadline as set by OEO for those persons holding jobs allegedly with conflicts of interest for them either to resign or be fired. Well, it'll be interesting to wait and see what happens. There's been no official word from OEO as of this point. Gene McIntyre for Channel 8 News on the Move.